are we protected in a way by the way our constitution is set up or whatever the case may be? What, um, what assurances can we, are there to say that we won't fall or be pressured into adopting some stupid legislation? I, I'll say this. Um, most legislation that's somewhat forced on us normally comes about because there's somewhere within our economy where we have a favorable advantage and whatever we're doing is somehow reducing their ability to either collect taxes or to increase industries that they may have. So you, if if it's not going to impact them negatively or they don't recognize the fact that they've been having certain shortfalls um, on their bottom line and it was directly a result of some activity or financial in, in, um, product or service that we're offering here in the Bahamas. They, they're not willing to do because they, of whatever. So, so there's, there's very little... Um, that we'll see in the form of interference from international concerns in that respect. I, I think we would probably get a bit more flack, um, you know, if we started to put certain legislation in place, um, again, like the DARE Act, where okay. we were sort of setting ourselves up to be a major player in the crypto space. And if crypto continued to be something that was, you know, really starting to, to hamper with the U.S. economy mm -hmm. or European economy was trying to accomplish, and they saw everything was moving towards crypto, and everything crypto was moving towards the Bahamas. There would there would most likely be some sort of um, you know negative feedback on that part where they may start to make certain changes. The SEC may jump in, um, but there's very little control that they have uh, when it comes to those type of activities that happen here in Providence. Because one of the biggest things that crypto brought with it my headquarters are in new providence but i am global <laughs> i i my servers aren't even here in the bahamas right. so what are you going to seize um, you can't even find where the servers are the servers are spread all over the world right. um we we don't actually have a jurisdiction to speak of and if there were any laws or anything that was happening the the speed with which an organization like a crypto exchange or um, somebody behind a particular crypto coin can rapidly just move from jurisdiction to jurisdiction to other jurisdictions where they're protected, but still operate out of the Bahamas where it is fine and, and, and less stress to operate from um, because they may find certain things favorable here. So crypto brings with it a certain nuance that they just can't put a finger on just yet to identify how do we attack this. Okay. They, they, they're basically, right now, they're dumbfounded. There's, there's no way for them to say, you know, which way can we come at this? Because it's too big right now. Um, and it's got, gotten to a point where even when it starts to look like this is going to be, you know, a, a two-headed monster that we have to deal with, we still don't know what is that magic pill to attack this thing. And that may be also why you have certain um, developed countries who are exploring you know, a cryptocurrency, sorry, a CBDC, mm -hmm. even though, you know, they they're, they're, don't need they're a lot slower, but a lot of them are saying, really and truly, we don't see the benefit of a CBDC for our economy, right. which is why you see a lot more developing nations further along in their exploratory or pilots or actual implementation of a CBDC, because we actually have a real utility. We have a real use case, multiple use cases for a CBDC in our economy, as opposed to the United States or Great Britain or Switzerland, et cetera. Um, they're already basically operating in a cashless environment, um, even beyond just the cards. When you think about all these digital apps that they have, like, you know, PayPal and cash apps, cash apps and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the, like, Zelle and all those stuff. So they're real already operating in a space where they're using their real CBDCs, but not going to a centralized central bank in order to use their true um, legal tender. They're still using U.S. dollars on all these different cash apps. Um, they're not using Visa or MasterCard. Uh, they're not using physical cash. As long as you have a cell phone in your hand, and I was in the U.S. the other day, everything we did, and, and I was, you know, with, with my son who was in college, you know, um, he was with us. So he was basically our wallet. <laughs> you know, like any little thing that we were doing that wasn't credit card based, it was like, you know, the little taxi driver, a cash app, you bang. Right. You know? Tip the sky, cash up, bang. Everything, you know, just you have a phone, QR code, bang. NFC, tap, bang. Done. 
and, and that was that was the way those economies operate right now. So a CBDC is going to be like, what Why? are you doing? Yeah. Because we're looking, and hopefully we get to the point where the government truly starts to really adopt it, and we start to see social services payments rather than it taking six weeks for money to be airlift to the family islands and still unaccounted for at the end of the day, we can start having that happen in hard CBDC with a click of a button. Everybody who was supposed to get a social service check on Thursday at 1 a.m. gets it at Thursday at 1 a.m. You wake up in the morning, money in your wallet. You just get it as there. And, and that's that's where we want to get to. You okay. know, that's a definite help and a benefit that we see in our economy right. that the U.S. and other you know, developed nations may not even be interested they, in. They, might need it they, they may be focusing more on how, how do we stop this big, this right. big crypto, this big right. buy, cryptocurrency right. that's coming down the road. Okay, I like that. So, that was a good wrap up. What do you have to say? I am long term, <laughs> <laughs> long term concerned that um, uh, this will be abused by the central banks because once they realize what a powerful tool they have at their disposal um you know it it won't be beyond imagination to think political parties won't use it as well uh, and you know you you <clears throat> you talk the wrong way you vote the wrong way whatever you could be in financial difficulties for a while you know if if uh and, and nothing is private anymore. And so if, uh, you know, it, it makes it possible to become more like China, where you start to have social credit scores. Oh, I know. Oh, we didn't even get the, to that. The, yeah. te the technology is already there. It's all rolled out. And all you need to do is implement it. Oh, that's such a temptation. 